comes to mind for that question is, and this ties into something later, but when I attended Rowan University here in New Jersey, I had a professor named Dr. Jorgensen and Dr. Jorgensen implored us to not wait to become the teachers that we always wanted to be because she said it's real easy to get stuck in a rut and then three years in after you have tenure you're like you can't change you're afraid to change and so start off crazy being the you know the teacher that you that you dreamed about being while you were in college and so I took that advice for all it was worth and I created this lesson that I'll, uh, the short of it is I created this lesson that kids were creating art projects in my room. This is for ninth grade literature class. We were creating the Harlem Renaissance Museum in our room. And so kids, everyone, every group got assigned someone from the Harlem Renaissance and they had to create an exhibit. And I had kids that were like making awesome stuff, like models out of clay, models out of mannequin heads and hair and wigs and makeup and stuff. One of my old students, Genesis, and her friend created a piano out of cardboard and then inset an actual piano keyboard into it so that it actually played music. And it was sick. As administration was walking around giving a tour of the school to someone, they walked into my room and I wanted to die. Cause it was like, it didn't look like we weren't reading anything, we weren't writing anything. The kids were laying all over the floor and on desks and we had music on from the time period and they were creating things and working together and using like hot glue guns and saws and nails and stuff. And I thought I was gonna lose my job. And so gentlemen came in, they walked around the room a little bit, they left. And one of my old students came over to me and she said, Reynolds, you know what they just said? And I thought, oh my God, I am terrified at what they just said. They looked around and they said, this is what a classroom should look like. And that was like the most empowering thing to me. I, I really think there's an importance to not hang on other people's opinions about what's going on in your classroom. Cause that can make you do things that you aren't comfortable with or that you don't think you should be doing or that aren't right to you. But at that moment it was, February of my first year of teaching, that meant a lot to me and it kind of did show me that I, that I was on the right path. The moment I realized I was becoming a better teacher was during a parent-teacher conference. I had a sweet, sweet student who came to me really, really struggling and I knew that I had to do some sort of a targeted intervention, but as a first-year teacher, I didn't really know what that was and what it was supposed to look like. So I met with our academic specialist and we sat down and we put together a plan and I worked with this little boy one-on-one -on -one for, um, I want to say about like an eight-week period. And when I met with his mom at his parent conferences and we were comparing work and just seeing all the progress that he's done, she was so impressed and so proud of him. And that to me was like, okay, I had a struggle in front of me. I did what I needed to do to overcome that, to help him overcome his struggles. So that for me was like a huge moment in my first year um, when I was realizing that I was becoming a better teacher. The first year that you teach, you're really just trying to keep your head above water. You're planning uh, a day in advance, sometimes the day of. And the second, it, it's because you don't know what's coming, you know, around the corner. And you don't really know to how to help students that are struggling. So my second year, I can say that having the opportunity to teach the same curriculum again, I, ha I was much more prepared to help my students. So I can remember my second year, I had a student who was, she was struggling in math. And um, in fourth grade, we ramp up division to a whole nother level and it's difficult. But having the opportunity to have taught that the year before, I recognize what she was going through and how I could help her. So I was able to help her in a more efficient way. And I just remember vividly thinking, man, I'm a way better teacher my second year than I was my first year. And I guess, you know, with experience comes wisdom. Mm -hmm.